say that you love me. I know that's a lie. <laughs> that's how we start on that. You won't <laughs> break me, but you do it every time. You say that you're different. I know that's a lie. And I fall for it every time. Every time. You could really come on the phone if you wanted to. Of course, but the thing is, we want the angle. That's a different vibe, but you be adding them. Yeah, Jamar edits. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, man. We are rolling. We going? Yes. Bet. All right, man. Fuck it. Shit, bro. Let's go, dude. How you feeling, dog? I feel fucking <laughs> great, bro. I feel fucking awesome, dude. How are yeah, you feeling? I'm good, bro. This feels weird, bro. Yeah, it does. This shit feels in a good way. Yeah. Like, in a very it, good way. It feels kind of full circle to me. Bro. Yes, bro. Oh yeah. Cause it bro, it feels circle. like it feels like just yesterday, we were at Smoothie King. Bro, I listen. I talk <laughs> about Smoothie King all the time. I remember those bro. days. That's, that's how I met, or like through high school. Nah, we initially. met. We met originally. Damn, when did when did we meet originally? We met because Smoothie of King Farnham. Was way back for yeah. sure. We met because yeah. of Farnham. Yeah. Was yeah. it Man of the Hour that we met because of? Like in that time frame, bro. I cannot. That might have been it. He'll probably hate that I brought up Man of the Hour. <laughs> Anytime I ever bring that shit up, he's like, bro, stop, bro. Damn. That nigga Let car- me cook. Bro. He regrets that. Nigga Farm has some corny ass phases. <laughs> corny ass phases. Hey, you said it. When you look back at it, bro, some corny ass phases. You said I, it. I, I, even, I love it, bro. Even down to the tape that we did together, shit was just corny. Rob, what up? Robin yeah. House. Rob in the hey, house. That's, that's my cousin, Rob. What's up, cousin Rob? What's good, <laughs> man? You probably seen him in some, of our, in some of our videos and shit. I think I have, man. Yeah, man. But What's up? Let me introduce myself. <laughs> Nigga trying to be all proper and shit, man. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, man. Rob, go ahead. Uh, chill over there. Sip your Tito's. So you could have came and dot me up. Oh wait, am I supposed to take my you shoes good, bro. off? You got your boots. We gotta, we gotta have. Oh, no, keep here, it man. on. Oh, These are special. Oh, my bad, right. guys. We keep good. All right, <laughs> Robbie, Rob, you can chill right over there, bro. You on the damn angle? Go ahead. <laughs> pour your drink, man. Pour your drink. Sip up. All right, we chilling. All right, we good. We get our intro, Leroy. <laughs> Welcome to another episode. Here we going. Okay, cool. <laughs> Technical difficulties, right? All right. Welcome to another episode of the Payday All Podcast. Uh, we here. To, this one today is special. Very special. All right. Because we got my guy. Yes. All right. I'm not even trying to like be on some crazy shit, but we got my guy here who I ain't seen in a minute. Man. Uh, we know him as as Jay back in the day, but now he's Angel Angel yeah. Hill. Yeah. Uh, so we appreciate you coming on. Bro. Hey man, Let's go. I'm fucking, <laughs> I'm so, dude, I'm so excited to be here. I'm, I'm just happy to be here. Bro. My boy's feeling nice right now. I'm, hey, listen, <laughs> if y'all are watching right now, I'm fucking blast. <laughs> I am, I am, I am gas. Tell us what you did before you got here. Man, I, I smoked till I couldn't breathe, bro. <laughs> Now, what did you do? Like a joints? Oh, yeah. I'm a joint person, man. You know what's so funny is I was wondering if he's if he's gonna come in here and, and smoke on the pot. That's mm. funny to think. I, nah, I, man. <laughs> I didn't know if that'd have been cool, and then I, I already smoked it. I feel you. You good? You I know? wouldn't have gave a shit, but fair. But, uh, but yeah. But Normally, I, honestly, bro, that would have been super sick. Yeah, I wouldn't. Have, I, I wouldn't mind it, but just I'm just putting it out there. But either way, we got you here. But bro. I'm off the Ashwagandha right now. You know what I'm saying? Ashwagandha. So sipping the Ashwagandha. I don't know. My mom gave it to me. <laughs> no, oh, your mom smoked? Nah, this is like oh, ash- oh, a oh, liquid it's seed drink. It's like liquid seed. It's nah. It's like fucking seltzer water that has ashwagandha oh, okay, okay. in it. I don't know. I don't even know what ashwagandha is, but I feel very calm. You feel good? Yeah, yeah. I feel like emotionless. Damn. I like that. That's lit. <laughs> Respect. Respect. All right, well, bro. my guy's here, bro. That's fine. So hold on, before because before we get going in this, you was talking about you. So you moving back to L.A. I am moving back to LA. How long have you been in Tampa? Tampa? Literally a week. Yeah, yeah, I've been here a few days. I kind of came to just see my family and, and do Florida shit. And then, man, I'm ready to just, like, it's it's weird, bro. Like, I'm, I'm an environment person because I kind of feed off of, like, where I'm at. And, like, I spent, I spent, like, half a year in Missouri. 
in the middle of nowhere, like country wise. I was gonna ask you. I was gonna say because I was like, bro, Damn. they be asking me where, yeah. where you stayed. At? I was like, I was like, like Michigan. I was like, wasn't like Iowa or <laughs> Idaho or some shit, bro. It yeah, was one of those man. like rural. It was in Missouri. Yeah, it that's was in Missouri, was. man. Damn, okay. um, I love it, dude, because the people are so nice and like, pe- other people hold your doors open for you and like they say thank you and like. I don't know, man. It's it's a different environment, but the the problem with living in and you know even here, right? Like I love Florida, and I you know I love to do Florida shit, and I love to just I love to be here. But like the 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 mental the mindset that people have here is different than like a you know in L.A. or in New York or in Atlanta, yeah. where it's like you can kind of just surround yourself in work, you know, it, out there. Yeah. Yeah. In L.A., yeah. See, and the thing, that, the thing that I hear most of the time, because you got to realize, I lived in Florida my whole life. Yep. So it's T. Yep. yep. So it's like, we, we've been, we visited Temple. many different places, L.A. specifically, but all we typically hear from people that we know who go there, it's who like are in that stories, scene. Yeah. yeah, it's just on, <laughs> it's just really on some like, toxic, toxic, Man. fake type shit. I heard hell on earth. Yeah. <laughs> <Somebody> <laughs> yeah. Said, people literally say that. That's pretty, I mean. Disguised as a carnival, like. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing about L.A. is like, so... It's a blessing and a curse, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, here, you know, or in Missouri, you're not going to run into Justin Bieber at a gas station. Yeah, of course. You know, but, like, I don't know, man. It's There's definitely, it's got its cons whenever you go to, like, a major city. And I think the problem and the reason why people say that, because a lot of those people are probably, like, industry people. Yeah. You know, they, like, Correct. do something in entertainment. So, yeah. like, you know, uh, the reason why I enjoy being here is because, like, we're just shooting the shit, you know. Yeah, we're talking. About that. Yeah, like it's not like we didn't we didn't sit down before this and go, all right, what are we gonna say yeah. that we can use as clickbait to go viral? Correct. You know, mm-hmm. and like everyone's agenda is in L.A. And, and not everyone, so don't let me don't let me you know kind of stereotype. We're, but like, we're just we're, we're generalizing. Right yeah, here. we're generalizing. Yeah. So like, every, I feel like my experience in L.A. was the friends that you make or like the the connections that you make is is purely business Mm. there's really not a lot of like personal relationships that you build as like friendships or like shit outside of the entertainment shit yeah Yeah. you know that's That's why people think pretty much what everybody says like everyone has that motive and goal and then uh, some people make probably fake it and to make it and they're not really like building real it's like i'm literally just becoming a friend with you just to potentially get something out of my mind that's all i'm thinking about if and if i don't see any benefit necessarily to 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 talk to you, yeah. then I'm really not going to associate like, myself with you. Yeah. yeah. There's some people that are like, dude, I've met some really fucking good people. Like, I've met some people that are going to be like my lifelong friends in LA. But, mm. you know, there I had to I had to run through a lot of people that were, you know, like, dude, I have, I've had people like start conversations with me being like, all right, what's up? So like, who have you worked with? Like, mm. that's the first thing yeah. they said to me. And I'm like, whoa, bro. Damn. Like. Like you barely even know my name, and mm-hmm. you just want to know who I've worked with. That's weird, dude. bro. Ima- I can't even imagine. Like, imagine us going out, <laughs> that's in Tampa. I don't even know. Imagine like a, a just meeting up somebody, a girl, yeah. and she's like the first thing she says is like, "Who who do you hang out with? Yeah, like who who do you what like what do you do like who are you with that I might know, bro? And like that's yeah. fucked up. Introducing your name out there is kind of instead of being like, "Yo, what's up? I'm Angel." Like what people do out there some most of the time is like, "Yo, what's up? I'm this person, and I do this." Mm. Like. Like yeah. what's up? I'm John. I work at Atlantic. I'm an A and R. What what's I, up? Nice to meet you. And see, you're like, I, bro, that's we're at Outback Steakhouse. Like, <laughs> like, like nigga, what? We're in the like, bathroom at Outback <laughs> Steakhouse. I don't care what you do, bro. Like, it's weird, dude. But th- listen, man. I, I it's once again, it's a blessing and a curse because I have I I have met one of my best friends that I I have right now is Kasky. I met him in oh yeah. I met him in L A. Yeah, that's why I was actually gonna ask you. Yeah. How you even met, how you yeah. met him? What's what's the story behind cool. that? Because y'all are like he's boys. man. That's my brother, dude. Like that's fine. And and you know what it what it's from and the reason why like I love him so much. Not even just on a on a obviously on a business level, but on like a friendship and as as like a person is that the reason why he does what he does. Like that's why I fuck with him because yeah. there's so many people that are like, dude. I, you know, I, and don't get me wrong. I was like this when I first started, it was like, all I cared about was being rich and famous or like, I wanted women to fuck with me and be like, whoa, that guy's super cool. You know, like my intentions were off. The reason why he does music, bro, is because he knows how much of an impact he can make in people's lives that need it. Mm. Right. And like, I've, I've changed what kind of music I make being around him. 
because of that. Yeah. Like, I, you know me, bro. Of course. I used to be a rapper. Yes. And I was terrible. But I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a rapper. And, like, I, you know, being around him, when I first met him, I was kind of rapping a little bit, you know. And, like, I really just kind of realized that, like, being around someone... Cause I mean, Caskey really lives that like he, bro. He's a rapper, you know, yeah. like, and he really lives that lifestyle. And like, I realized that like, I wanted to live that lifestyle so bad. Where like, you know, I, bro, on my days off, I would just go chill in the hood just so I could try to, you know, like really <laughs> live that lifestyle. And I, I realized like, bro, that's not me, dude. Like, oh, I'm man. me. So yeah, it's like I'm wearing cowboy sauce. boots. Facts. I should, you know. So it's like, <laughs> it's just so cool because he he really does make music to make an impact and like change people and yeah. like. I can genuinely see that he's. he's it's very, like therapy, bro. Yeah, yeah. He he's makes music for people that need someone to make music for them. Because yeah. I, I can even tell it down to his fans. Dude, that they're they fucking are awesome. Bro. Now, in, 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 now, let me just to go back a little bit. So, so how did you two originally meet? So that's a funny story. Uh, I so I just moved to or not moved. I I was living in L.A. and I was working in Outback Steakhouse. This is bro. This is how fast shit can change. And I like I don't know what camera to look at, but fucking look at me. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> second to the left. Second to the left. There you okay. Go. So this is how fast shit can change. Like. I was working at Outback and I remember thinking and having this conversation <clears throat> that somebody I was with at the time, like, I, I don't want to do music anymore because it's too hard, you know, and like, I want to stop doing music and like, you know, everybody, every artist and creative goes through this where like they get insecure in their work and like, they're just like, you know what? I don't feel like my calling is, is this anymore. It's got to be something different because it hasn't worked out yet. Um, dude. I shit you not. It was like two days after I really was like, all right, bro, I'm done. I'm just going to be a, a bartender at Outback, which is nothing wrong with that. But like, that's what I was going to do. I ran into, I ran into this guy, Bootleg Kev. Now, mm. Bootleg Kev is super well known in Tampa. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. back in 2014 or something, Swag Hollywood yeah. um, got me on a record and they played it on 94.1, and I was under the impression that that was because of Boulay Kev. So, like, I had never met him in person, but he it was the first radio spin I'd ever had. Yeah. It was the coolest shit of all time. So you kind of felt indebted to him in a yes. sense? Yes. So when I saw him, I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to say anything to him. And I bought him and his family their meal that night at Outback. And he was like, dude, what the fuck? Like, why, why did you do that? And I, you know, I told him and I thanked him. And I was like, I don't want anything from you. I just wanted to say thank you because at that point in my life, it was so sick. Yeah. Like that. I mean, you remember, bro. Mm -hmm. You remember when I got played on the, it was like, I literally wanted to quit my job mm -hmm. the next day. I think I quit my job three days later at Smoothie King because I was like, fuck it. I'm on. I'm lit. <laughs> I got played on the radio three yeah, times, bro. bro. I'm like, I'm lit. Yeah. Um, and he was like, dude, let me follow you on Instagram and you know, I, I'm opening up a studio, like, you want to come intern? And I was like, fuck yeah. So I went in, I went to go intern and it was not even two days later because I didn't know how to record anybody. And like, I spent a lot of time in LA. My, my like engineering credits are way bigger than anything I've done on like the artist side. Yeah. Um, but I went, I started interning and one of the engineers got two fucked up on shrooms with uh, an A-list celebrity that I will not name and I had to run that session and ever since I ran that session I kind of took over and my first real session I ever did was for Doobie and Doobie brought in Caskey mm. just as like a feature mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there recording and Caskey was like yo I fuck with the way you record because I'm engineering wise I'm very 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 fast mm -hmm. tracking and so he's like, yo, let's meet you and Tasty. Let's lock in for a week and let's make an album. And I'm like, all right, cool. Then COVID happened. And so what we did was we made an album in seven days called Viral during COVID. And that had Caskey's record, Martial Law. And like Martial Law was like at the time, I mean, it's going to have like 10 million streams on Spotify alone. Oh, okay, so and it, bro, it fucking took off because it was about, you know, we ain't scared of no police, bitch. We got guns too, you know. Like yeah. it was a perfect time for that, you know. And it's yeah. like especially in, especially in twenty twenty. And I yeah. think that, that. Yeah. me and him are kind of like kindred spirits in a way, where it's like we're the same person. So we kind of just like I, I guess the universe kind of put us in the room for a reason because we just stayed in contact. And then 
we kept working and kept working and one day he was like so do you just engineer and this was like i don't know fucking three months into our friendship yeah and i i always i always live by the code of like play your role till your role switches you know so you never wanted to pretty much like put the music in his face like yo nah, oh, by, by the way bro nah, nah. i hell also nah. make music right. hell nah because like I, I figured if it was gonna like if you know i genuinely didn't give a fuck about that yeah I genuinely only cared about, like, yo, I really like this guy. Like, he's a cool guy, and, like, all I want to do is just be around him and soak up his energy because it's so positive. He's such a hustler. He's a Florida dude, and I love Florida dudes. Mm -hmm. Like, they have a different mindset, bro. So, like, we just, I guess, you know, cultivated a real friendship over time, and, like, one day he was like, show me your music, and I showed him, and he was like, you're fucking joking me. Bro, Quit your job. Like, <laughs> you need to be doing it. Like, you have, you're, this is it, bro. Yeah. And he's been, like, the, the real driving force behind me as, like, a, as, like I said, as a friend, but also as someone in the industry. It's like, dude, you got it. That's you, mm -hmm. Bro, like, he put me on the fucking, like, bro, the only reason I'm on the map and I'm using that, like, you know, I don't want to sound douchey. Like, bro, it's because of him. Yeah. Yeah. The first record we ever did went fucking stupid. It had half a million views yeah, in like two weeks. Talking about, um, you don't, you don't really, really love, love me. me. Yeah. Bro, I love that song. I appreciate it. Fine, bro, man. I was literally listening. Bro, because I was thinking about it last night. <laughs> That's yeah. bro. Oh, shit. That's kind of catchy. That shit is hard as fuck. It's in my head, line, bro. bro. I listened yeah. to that song on my way back to the crib last night. Let's go. I listened dude. to that song because I was like, oh, we got JC coming on tomorrow. I was yeah. like, bro, I was like, shit was stuck in my head for a couple of weeks. Bro, I appreciate that. So, I love that track, bro. Thank you. So you did your thing on that. Thank you. How, I mean, I did it in far, ten minutes. Okay, I was gonna ask you what was the story of that. Was that like an orchestrated thing or? Nah, we. He was like, bro, let's work. And I, you know, I had free studio time because I ran the studio at that time. And I was like, yeah, fuck it, swing by, let's work. Yeah, you know, just on some, just yeah, just like chill we'll shit. see, let's we'll see what ha if something yeah. happens, it happens. If not, it it doesn't, you know. And this was the first record we ever did together, which was a crazy. Oh, that was the first song. Yeah. Oh shit. Like, bro, we, we just went in the studio with this dude, Grilla, and who made the beat, and, like, we just sat down, and I, at that time in my life, I felt, I was so depressed, and, like, I wrote that song because I felt so unloved, and I felt so, like, and it was because of LA, and it was because of my own mindset, but, like, I felt so unloved and, like, so unappreciated in my art, and that, like, you were just going through some shit. Yeah, so, like, when I was really, bro, I literally just put the headphones on, and I, I, I think they could vouch for me, but... I put the headphones on and I literally just said, love me, love me, you don't really love me. And I sang it in, the, in that falsetto and Caskey hit the fucking talk back and was like, that's it, yeah. run with that. And then it was like, <laughs> dude, five minutes later, the hook was done. And I came out and he was like, what the fuck, dude? So ever since then, he's like, he, he invited me to go to the, the, um, the first writing session for Jaws, um, which is like a very anticipated album. And mm -hmm. I got to help write. I was the only writer there. And I got to help write the album. And ever since then, man, we've just... I talked to him today. Like, he's... Bro, he's literally, like, one of my best friends. So that's, like, that's, a, that's a brother at this point. Yeah. Like, yeah, a man. literal brother yeah. to me. Yeah. Exactly. That, like, so, you so you were, you with him now, kind of like how we used to hang out back in the day. Yeah, bro. Yeah, because we were with each other awesome. every day. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a different type of bond. It's because it's... It, it's because it's a good... He's a good person. Yeah, for sure. Like, and you... And the, I feel like in that in that area you're in especially being in LA you need that somebody like that in your circle yeah, yeah bro balance. that's correct what is that what's the quote like it's like if if you're the if you hang around five people you become the sixth or whatever some, it is. some yeah. shit some shit about, like yes. that you, you know, know who like, you hang around yes yeah. some shit like that yeah and yeah. it's like bro like I, I I really I really have kind of not changed necessarily as a person but I kind of have a different paradigm of how I see everything yeah now because of that you know so, now it's cool, man. T, did you know? What up? My boy here has a song with G Easy. Oh no, I didn't know that. Yes, uh, damn. He was on G. Talk about that. He was on G Easy's album. Oh word. Yes. Yeah, um, there's a song, Bad Bad News. It is bad. Yes. Bad news. Um, and that is awesome. How the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How the hell did that happen? Yeah, man. Yeah. I was. I wanted you to touch on that. If you're okay with yeah, it. Yeah, no, I could touch on that. Because yeah. I, I think I think this could be a really good lesson for artists in general. And and let me start by saying that like I have no this is no beef. This is no like, you oh, know, shit. fuck this guy kind of thing. Yeah, um, there's no ill. He, will. He's a great he, he was a really great guy. 
I got a call, bro. This is how LA works, too. This is exactly, bro. This is, oh, the, shit. This is the fucking <laughs> industry, yeah, dog. <laughs> so I get off work at Outback, right? And I'm, I'm pulling up at the house. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. I had just closed the bar. I'd worked a double long, <clears throat> fucking long ass night. And I get a text. Hey, bro, show up at this address with two bottles of Casamigos and two cases of Modelo. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Bro, I'm no, tired, man. no, <laughs> bro, this is stupid. But I felt it like I felt like God was like, "You gotta go," and I'm like, "What?" All right, so I went, and I had just watched that. Uh, Jeezy had just done this this uh, like tour my home video or whatever yeah. for like fucking I don't know HGTV or something, and <laughs> I had just watched it like three days later. And this is the law of attraction. I feel like because weird shit like that happens. I used to listen to Kevin Gates and. And then run into Kevin Gates the next day in LA, bro. It was fucking weird. So that shit is real. So I show up and I'm like, I've seen this fucking house before. Where have I seen this fucking house? And they come and grab me and I'm walking up and I just see all these fucking plaques on the wall. And it's Jeezy's plaques. And I'm like, fuck, I'm at Jeezy's house right now. Oh, shit. And we like go into the illest studio I've ever seen in someone's home. Like, bro, dude's got this massive crib in the hills. But then he's got this second, what feels like a second crib on the lower level of the hill yeah. that has like this downstairs basement and shit. And it's like all these, bro, there's like hundreds. There's no wall room, all covered in plaques. Like he had the Damn. fucking, um, bro, and I, I love g -Eazy. Like I love him. Like, bro, I'm such a big fan of him, bro. Yeah. Like, and you know, in Tampa in 2016 mm -hmm. or whatever, like whenever he had his fucking heyday, it was like, Jeezy is the fucking man, yeah, bro. Because at one point, I was yeah, even kind of was... listening to him at one point. Yeah. Some yeah. years back. Yeah. Where I was like, this guy's he's pretty fucking good. Bro. I feel like every, there's like an era, like every two, three years where it's like just a one, that one right white, rapper that who's white running rapper? shit. Yeah. Like right now, kind of kind of fading off a little bit, but Jack Harlow, he was, he's running shit. Facts. I feel like before yeah. that, it was like probably Jeezy or something. Yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, Slim it, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Malcolm, Malcolm Moore, like all that. Yeah. 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 Bro, for real. Yeah. So like, and like as I'm walking down these stairs, you know that that jacket he wore for that one album where it's like a leather jacket that had yes. painted back. Yes, is the black the black it's a black leather jacket. I want to say is these things happen. I yes, think. these these things or, happen. Or when yes. it gets dark out. Or it was, it's, it's still it's like one black, of those. It's one, the, like one of those black and white covers or some shit, right? Yeah, where he's turned around and it's yes. just his leather jacket. Bro, mm -hmm. he had that leather jacket I, framed. I, I believe that's hanging yeah. above the studio. Oh, yeah. for real? Yeah, bro. So I'm like, bro, I'm such a big fan, and I'm like. Dog, I'm in this man's house right now, and I'm looking at this, and I come downstairs, and there he is, and I'm like, shut the fuck up. I'm this is the most LA shit I've ever experienced. I'm in Jeezy's house, and I was just making drinks 20 minutes ago, bro. Like, what the fuck? And so he's like, hey, man, can you hit falsettos? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I can hit falsettos. And as I'm about to say something, I hear somebody say something, and I turn around, and it's OG Mako. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait, what? I'm like, bitch, what bitch you guessed it? Yes, yes bro. Bitch. And I'm like, I'm like, what the you would, fuck? You would have never guessed that. Bro, I'm like, I'm in the studio with g Easy and OG Maka. I just was at Outback. What the fuck, dude? I'm freaking out, bro. And, you know, this is because my, my manager at the time was was such a good friend with him. And so, like, I'm like, all right, cool, man. Play it, play it cool, Jake. Play it cool, you know? And he's like, can you, can you har harmonize this shit? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I can. And so, excuse me, my bad. I eat beef jerky, fuck. Can. So I'm trying to you know, bro. You got, we don't have we don't have worse shit happen here than that, bro. So he's like, yeah, layer this for me, harmonize this, and it, it was the hook, and it was like the bad bad news yeah. or whatever. And all I had to do was just do that in a falsetto. So I'm thinking like I'm already lit, cause I'm like, bro, I'm singing harmonies on Jeezy's record. This is fucking crazy. Yeah. And we get that part done. And he's like, dude, you got fucking pipes on you. And I'm like, what the fuck? Dude, yeah. like, I'm tweaking, bro. <laughs> and so we get done and they play. It was so cool because they had played the record like 30 times back to back to back to back, just listening to it over and over and over again. And they're like, this is a hit. And they're like, bro, we're going to put this on the album. We're going to put this on the album. And I'm like, what? These things happen too? Like, because these things happen was like one of his biggest albums yes. ever, bro. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm about to be on a sequel. Like, even though I, I knew I wasn't going to be like, you know, on it, on yeah, it. I'm like, like, that's cool. I'm going to yeah. tell everybody, yeah. you know? And uh, so we, you know, it was done. Everything was done, right? And I ended up staying there for like, because, dude, I, I had so much fun with him, bro. Like, 
he was such a good guy. He's laughing all the time. He was so sweet to me, bro. And then like, you know, uh, we ended up making another record. It was me, and I, I have it on my phone somewhere. I, but it's me, G Easy, and OG Maka. OG Maka is on the hook. G Easy's on the verse, and I'm on a verse. What year is this? This is like two years ago. Damn, bro. Okay. Th- okay. Th- th- let me just say, so weird to think G Easy and OG Mac. That's such a like a. That's bro. literally random. And they're random great friends. Duo. Really? They're great friends. And like random duo. The the sad part about this, and this is why I say this, and there's no ill intention on this, you know. But this is part of the industry that we're in, you know. Um, the day that the al- I get a call that like, hey, it made the album. The album drops tomorrow. Yeah. I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. That's so cool. Like, um, the person that mixed it was. Jason Joshua, who's like one of the biggest engineers in the industry, and I've never had my fucking, I've never heard my vocals mixed by someone. To it's that like capacity. A, it's like a Mike Dean in my head, or like a Josh yeah. Goodwin who does Bieber mm. and shit. Like yeah. I'm like, yeah. I want to hear how just my vocal harmonies sound from this dude mixing it, because mm. that's like a five five grand mix minimum. Yeah. And so me and my me and my girl were just sitting in the in the living room, and I'm. I'm just playing the album, right? And I'm listening to it. And I'm like, damn, this is so ill. Like, this is so ill, bro. And the song is about to be done. And it the the song, like the last hook hits, and I'm like, damn, there's like 30 more seconds on this record. What did they what did they add? Bro, I don't know if it was Jason Joshua. I don't know who it was. They took my harmony, just my harmony, mm-hmm. like of me saying, bad, bad news. They made it the outro yes. with just me. Yes. Oh. With just me. So I'm the whole outro of the record. Just me singing. Yes. Bro, I'm fucking lit. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, I made it. I'm fucking singing on this. Ro- like, <laughs> that's me. And I'm losing my shit. I'm like, this is me. I did it. And so I'm like ripping through the credits like, where my cr- where's my credits? And I'm like, oh, no. I, there's no. No. Oh. I'm not on the credits. And I'm like, all right. You know what? Genius has like a background vocals area. Yeah. And like they've got like an outro area where it'll tell who's on the outro. Bruh, I'm not even on that. On the background vocals, they said that my part at the end was OG Mako singing on the end. What? Damn. And I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, and you know, and it wasn't like a, I wanted that for like the recognition or like, you know, I didn't want to be featured, and I didn't want any of that. I, I feel like it's really just a principle, principle at that point. Principle yeah, thing. and like you know, but sometimes you know, like and I and I know this man. Sometimes that kind of slips through the cracks because it's like someone that that's that big, and like that wasn't a single on the record. It wasn't like you know. So so do you think that maybe potentially it was kind of one of those things like you got all those songs now, and he kind of just really didn't pay too much attention to the credits. Of that I don't think like, that he pays attention. I know he doesn't yeah, do the credits. Yeah. I know for a fact he doesn't do the credits. So, not his fault. And I think that it was probably a very last minute decision to like, you know, just fuck it. That, that would be a dope ass outro with that dude on the end. You yeah. Know? And like, I, I don't know, man, it's just one of those things where you kind of, you just, you take it on the chin and you're like, all right, well, that's part of the, this part of my come up story. And like, it's cool to talk about, you know. I'm on Jeezy's album. I have an, a record with Jeezy and OG Maka. I yes. mean, it'll never see the light of day. You know what I'm saying? But still, it's still cool. Got the outro though. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it is what it is, man. Shout out Jeezy. I, you know, I appreciate the opportunity, bro. It's no ill will over here, man. So that's that's what that happened. So you, I guess you've probably learned your lessons in terms of Very. covering your ass. You were you were signed. At one point, though, I, right? I was. I was signed to Really? It. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, I'm learning everything new. Like, man, listen. You know, <laughs> it. Listen, I'm learning too, bro. Uh, I'm. I'm just rolling with the punches. Yeah. I. I was signed. I was signed to Ethica. Um, and. Ain't that the underwear company? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was trying to find. Nah, but it is. Funny, <laughs> the right? way I said it. Because that's what everybody says to me, dog. <laughs> and I'm like, you yeah, said, bro. Wait, so then company? was it like a music deal or more like a brand thing? Yeah, so like they basically, bro, if you think about it, like Ethica's really mm-hmm. tapped in with the culture. Like Ethica's like really tapped in on the music mm-hmm. culture, bro. Like, you know, Bieber and Wayne and like all these like massive artists are wearing Ethica, you know? And like yeah. Kid Ink, Meek Mill. You know, like Meek Mill talks about, like in raps, like I made 10 million off of Ethical. Rick Ross. Yeah. You know, like they're really tapped in. Correct. So they're like, well, you know, they didn't say this, but like, you know, I'm thinking in their mind, like, oh, well, shit, like we could do like a Red Bull music, you know? And like, 
we could make a separate entity where we have a major record label. So, bro, they started signing people and like, mm. It was so crazy because once again, this is how fast shit can switch, bro. Like the Caskey shit happened like less than a month after I fucking thought I was never going to do music again. Mm -hmm. Right. And like I'm engineering full time in L.A., like full time, 60 hours a week. I'm engineering and I get a call from my manager at the time and he was like, hey, we have a writing or like a, a, a session where we're going to show this one guy um, all this music for his other artists and he's like come through you know i think it'd be cool to have you there and i'm like all right cool so i go and i'm sitting there i'm just you know i'm a i'm a supportive friend you know so i'm sitting in the corner i know every word to my homie alexis i know every word to all of his shit and i'm in the back and i'm just fucking i'm just singing every word and the dude that was there you know trying to like sign he pointed at me and he goes hey what do you do i'm like i make music and this is actually a really weird story. He's like, show me. I was like, all right. And I had this. I had this. <laughs> that's so like. The way you say this. It sounds so eerie. Bro, it is. Hey, it is. What do you what do? What do, you do? <laughs> Bro, you that's say, exactly how they show are. Me. <laughs> show me. So he's like, show me. I'm like, all right. So at the time, I'm a rapper still. And I have this record called I'm Rich. <laughs> and it, that's lit. Uh, and it, dude, it, it's, a great, it's a great record yeah. for what it is. But the, the two records I showed him was a rap record, and then he's like, all right, show me something else. And then my manager goes, hey, show him that country record you did the other day. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> show him that country record. So I show him the country record, and he goes, yeah, you. You're the one. And I'm like, what, <laughs> what? the fuck? Sounds like a movie. Bro, that's, like, that's like a cult. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yo, you're, you're, the, you're the one I want to sign. And I'm like. Shut up, dude. I got like a thousand followers and I'm like, you know, I'm just now learning to do, you know, the engineering shit. Yeah. And bro, they really took care of me. They really, really took care of me. Oh, so it wasn't like it was just actually Nah, it was it was a weird situation because oh, okay. I didn't get to release music while being signed to them. Um, we just dropped a record together. It's called Player, shout out to Ethica. Um, but yeah, dude. They, they really just gave me the opera in the way that I look at it. And once again, it's a paradigm thing. And paradigm, in my opinion, is point of view and how I see the world. Mm -hmm. But um, they really just supported me through my artist development in the sense of like they gave me time to try to figure out what I was good at. If it wasn't for Ethica, bro, I, you know, I wouldn't be making the music I'm making now mm. because I spent almost three years just recording and they would not allow you to drop music well it was it was more of like they were getting structure in place and like you know it, it's a you know how you know how record labels that, go that, that, they, that's that's where the shit gets so weird to me bro just just to keep it to keep it a bug with nah, you. yeah. when you, you're signed to a label and then because i hear you out yeah however for two or three years you were with them not yeah, dropping and you're music. and you're just not dropping not music, and, and it's like, what what are you trying to put together that takes that long? And you're, you're it's like you know, any type of momentum that I could be building, I'm you're you're just stopping me at this point. Yeah, and you know, and I I had that feeling for a long time where I was like, man, like let's drop something, you know, and like like what what I ended up kind of like I said, dude, I had so much time, like I I literally didn't have a job for almost three years after working a job every day for mm -hmm. since I was fucking 16 dude. yeah mm. and I finally got the taste of what it was like to be an artist full-time I finally got the taste of what it, what it felt like and it was fucking liberating dude like they really bro they supported me so heavily and like they gave me access to an incredible studio and incredible engineers and incredible producers and like you know like weird shit like I'm in the studio and Ryan Sheckler shows up and I'm like bro that's that's pretty fire you know and it's like yeah. it and it was really cool and like i look at look at it for what it is now on the outside where it's like if i was dropping music then <clears throat> right and maybe this is why bro and mm -hmm. like i have to look at this like remember i was a rapper when i first signed to them so and now i'm like doing folk shit and piano ballads and yeah and you know edm music and shit and it's like when i first signed to them they were probably like all right we see the potential you're almost there let's get you there so they just get bro. They just so basically like, put me yeah. in the gym. Yeah. Seems like it was That's a good like, like first learning lesson. Like, yeah, you, know, you were learning because like would you do some shit like that now? Like just no. based off yeah. No, because I think I'm at a different point right, now. Right, right. I think now it's like 
it was good timing and learn yeah. From it. yeah and you look at you look Respect. at everything for what it is it's like you know if i it, being independent is the new wave if you can figure out how to make oh, yeah. a buzz by yourself of course do it so that's probably the the goal as of right now well not you're already doing it but yeah the goal i guess would be to continue to stay independent which i wanted to ask you because i saw it's funny because i saw a video the other day because i was just thinking this where you said i don't have a lot of music out yeah i don't and, have, yeah I, you bro, don't i have like and, five records and out. i look at and i look at and i was like he doesn't really have a lot of music out yeah and but the ones you do have they're hard hitting uh, just I to appreciate be honest that. They, they, they're fire I appreciate and, that. And that's not just me saying that as a friend. That's me saying that as a that. fan. I appreciate uh, that. They, they're genuinely good. That's genuinely good music. My my question is, now that you haven't been signed to Ethica or anybody for that matter for however long it's been, what's been kind of prohibiting you from dropping more music at this point? You know, I, I went through that weird period where I just wanted to write for other people. You know, like I, I was tired of trying to be, because dude, music is like, now it's like if you're not an influencer as well with music, mm -hmm. then like you're, what are you doing? Gotta have you the know, whole personality. Like you gotta have everything. Image. Like you, TikTok, and I mean, you guys know this because you you do the podcast. Yeah. Shit. It's like you got to be an influencer now. Like you have to, you know, like going into like major labels and shit. The first thing they're gonna say to you is, "All right, well, how many followers you got on TikTok? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like what? How much did your last record stream without us? Yes. Because all they want to do is just add fuel to the fire. Yeah. It's your image and likeness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, realistically, in the in the industry, that comes first. Plays yeah. a huge role. Yes. It comes. It plays yeah. a huge. Someone. Role. Someone. In the music. Some, exactly. That's why you have people yeah. who aren't quite, at who are who maybe way more talented. Yep. But don't have that. Dude. You and, know. And mm -hmm. it's because it's it's that's what separates. And you know, like I've always heard this. It's like you got to keep evolving. I mean, like look at Wayne, bro. Like Lil Wayne has done a great job of like just always somehow evolving and staying relevant in like the new world and like you know because it's hard bro, bro. that like, is difficult to do yeah. it is so hard to yeah. keep i mean like on top of how the world is now in the industry bro it's really hard i can genuinely say that's one reason why i even stepped away from making music i, I, I felt hey. i fell out of love with it hey Hey, shit, bro! Talk do your that. fucking research. <laughs> do your fucking research. This Roy Motors, man, bro. Roy Motors, Hush dog. Gang. for real. Yes, did y'all ever like do us like work on anything? We like, did. We did a. We, did, we either did uh, one or two records. Man, I know we did at least one. I know that for sure because we did one that I never dropped. Um, but go crazy. I can't remember the name of it, but I won't get too much in that. This isn't about me. My point being is that that was one of the reasons why. Yeah. I kind of fell out of love with this just because I was like, do I? Not only am I really interested in this, I'm yeah. not really interested in, in this anymore, but also I see the what you got to do to keep up with it and the trajectory yep. of things. I'm like, yep. I'm just not really into that personally. It just, it's it's changed, dude. It's yeah. always constantly evolving. We used to like, I mean, I, I Kasky made this joke one time when I was talking to him about like, you remember like when we used to print CDs off and shit in high school of course. and like mm -hmm. sell our mixes? Of course. We would print 100 CDs and think that, 20,000 people are going to hear that 100 mm -hmm. CD, you know? And we're like, yo, if I sell this 100 CDs, I'm lit. I'm on. Correct. I'm on, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, bro, the times have changed, dude. Like, we used to do shit out of backpacks and, like, you know, pull up and just, like, rap on ciphers mm -hmm. and shit. And, like, now it's like, you just got to, if you, you can figure out a way to promote your record by yourself. Of course. You don't digital. need anybody else. It's yeah. actually yeah. very interesting because you can have, Excuse me. you can have a song with, or let's say a video yep. with a million views and still not be lit. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. Lit. You I mean, me? I mean, I'm a great example of that. You you don't really love me has almost a million views on, yeah. on uh on YouTube. And don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful for that. But Correct. like it I'm not like completely different because of that. Correct. You know what I mean? It it was a great platform. Yes. And it's how you use the momentum that you're gaining and like right. that you're getting for your it's all leverage, dude. Yes. It's like it's like the consistency has to be there. Of course. You have to be consistent. Yes. And that's been a really big flaw of mine because, you know, as an artist and as a creative, I get really insecure and I get like, mm. I could have made the illest record ever. And then I'll, you know, I'll be thinking like, man, this shit sucks. Yeah. And then I'll go show it to somebody and they're like, bro, this is the best record I've ever heard from you. Mm. That could be tricky. For sure. Well, you don't have to name drop if you don't want to. Okay. But I'm going to ask you to. Is there anybody else? Because I know you work. I know you clearly you work with Jeezy. Yeah. All right. You with Casky? You doing your thing there? That's your brother. Yep. Is there anybody else 
that is worthy, that you feel is worthy of, you know, name dropping at this point that you may be working with or be in the mix with, oh, somebody that man. you're, maybe, I'm not even going to say maybe writing for or just making music with, whatever it is. You know, um, my manager now uh, has really done a great, great, great job of just trying to give me as, as many opportunities as possible. Um, my manager is Hector Sounds. Um, he produced on Donda. Um, he produced. Oh, that's fire! Damn. He produced. That's fire. Waiting for Never, the Post Malone record. Um, Tyler Yahweh's Gemini. Um, he's like one of the cultivators of, I would say, Tyler Yahweh's sound. Um, he was signed to Dre London for a very long time. All right, so you in the mix? I, I, I well, he, he's, he's <laughs> in the mix. He's, he's in the mix. Um, but he's, dude, he's been so good to me because he, you know, he he sees the value that I can provide and like you know giving me a shot to like try to write these records for Post Malone um because I I've always wanted to just write records that's oh, really? kind of like yeah. I that's my end goal you know like I know that I can provide impact and like I can help you know provide therapy through music for people as well um but I think that my end goal is is writing records for other artists that's why exactly just like being more behind the scenes yeah because I you know it's kind of like I want to do the opposite of Black Bear. Black okay. Bear wrote for people and then blew up as an artist afterwards. Yeah. I'd like to, you know, show that I can write a hit because I wrote one for myself. And then people are like, yo, mm. that guy wrote that fire record. I want him to write one for me now. Yeah. So, like, you know, yeah, I, I guess trying to, you know, work with people like Post Malone and Tyler Yahweh and shit like that. Have I you met Post Malone yet? I have not, dude. I feel like we would get along so well. Yeah, because I'm going to be real. That seems like your vibe. I feel like y'all could be friends. That, yeah, that yeah. seems like your vibe. I feel like if you get in the room with him. Dude. Which, and I'm not saying this to be on some, like, just try to get in the room with him just to get nah, a benefit. Yeah, All I'm agree. saying is, but if you two got in the same room together, I feel like you two would, like, click. I agree. You, that's dude. the vibe I get from yeah. the outside. I, same you know what? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of, I'm kind of in the same boat. You know, it's yeah. kind of like you see somebody that you want to be more like, and you're like, you know, and I, I, dude, I feel like Post Malone is probably the nicest guy yeah. Oh, yeah. known to fucking men. And you and very much give off that energy. Okay, I, pre yeah. I appreciate that because I, I really kind of mold the way that I, I am now and just like the freedom aspect of like, you know, like I, I do that. You know, I'm just, you know, like I'm very, like, <laughs> I'm very loose, dog. I know, I know. I'm I know. Like, you just be chilling, bro. I'm chill. It's yeah. probably the Ashwagandha. <laughs> you know? Yeah, bro. But, you really just, you, man, you're a different person, bro. I appreciate you're that. You're a different bro. person for the better. I appreciate it. You're, like, that. And, and I love it, man. Because knowing you from, you know, who, and you've always been a great person. But, um, I, my, I was weird as fuck is sometimes, bro. It was just, you, it was, it's just, it's just so interesting to see that switch yeah. from back in It's 20, the intentions. Yes, exactly. That's why I'm doing it. Correct. You, it's it's kind of like you found your purpose. Bro, and I'm 27 now. So it's like, yeah, dude, bro. If I, if I didn't grow <laughs> as a person by now, it's yeah. like, fuck, dude, I'm never going to grow. Yeah. Man, we were, and know? we were back working at Smooth King back. Well, that was what I was, you were like, Man, 19. shout out Bill, bro. I know. Shout, shout out, out to Bill. Bill bro. Shout, <laughs> shout out to Bill. All right. Shout out Putting to Eve, man. Put uh, Slime, yep. Slime, shout out to Eve, bro. Hey, speaking of Post Malone, <laughs> yeah. bro, this man showed me uh, White Iverson on SoundCloud when White Iverson had 26,000 streams. That's Eric did that? Fuck, wait. I did meet Post Malone. <laughs> I did meet Post Malone. <laughs> All right, Yo, I'm high. high. I'm high. <laughs> nah, I forgot about this because it was so random. It was at that time. <laughs> I'm so high. Bro, so listen. <laughs> So, no, no. So he came to the Orpheum in Tampa, and he Whoa, he show. headlined okay. he headlined the Orpheum, and he only had three records. He performed White Iverson twice. Damn, that's that was the level he was at. I was like, what, what year was this? Yeah, two thousand. Fucked. The, literally, is it twenty fifteen? I remember when you went to this. What yeah, the? because I was I standing out this. back. This is a really cool story. Post Malone pulled up to the show late as fuck mm -hmm. with checkers. Okay. <laughs> And he pulled up with his mom in a Nissan Maxima that they drove from Texas to be here, Damn. dog. He pulled up with his mom. That's fire. Dude, That's it crazy. was so cool. And I, I like it, but it, the reason why I say I didn't meet him was because it was like incredibly fast. Yeah. Like he was going in through the back door and I was like, what's up, dude? Big fan. And yeah. he's like, what's up? Nice to meet you. And just went right in. Yeah. It's not on some like. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? What's your name? Like not... sitting down and Correct. chopping it up. Yeah. yeah. And weirdly fire. enough, Bootleg Kev threw that show. It's all a weird, Damn. full come around yeah, circle, crazy. man. Now, I wanted to ask you um, also about the show you did, because um, I know you've been doing shows with Caskey too. 
Yep. How, what's that experience like? How is oh that? Oh my God, dude. Because I'm seeing the crowd. I'm seeing the videos. I saw some even some shit on YouTube. I'm like, the people are really fuck like because I know weird. his his fans really fuck with him and you being as close as you are with him, they love man, you too. That man's fan base is the fucking best, bro. Yes. Like because they bro, they they're just so supportive. Like I, I literally made this joke today. I mean, I feel like Caskey could sell a cookbook and people would be like, fuck yeah. And it'd sell out <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. Because yeah. like they just love and, and this is a lesson. They love him for him first. And that's the same thing with Post. They love them for them as a person first. Yes. And they make really good music. Correct. Mm. So, like, they care about him and they love the music. Yeah. There's a lot of people that, like, you love the music, but, like, you don't really care about them as a person. Well, that's, that's, that's when you're in that kind of middle point yeah. where you're not, like, you know, a Kanye or a yep. little baby or whatever it is, but you're, you, you know, you have a solid fan base. They feel a little more connected to you. Yeah. Like they can touch you more. Yeah. So that. And it's more relatable. They're like. Correct. This person is, is definitely like more like me than, than a, you know, like a Steve Lacey who gets on stage and mm -hmm. is like, fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah. Fuck all of you. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's like, you know, just because you have a hot record does not mean there's longevity. I mean, look at. I'm not gonna. Well, fuck it. We can name names. I mean, look at like you know, like the little pump era and yeah, like the you know, like the SoundCloud era, era where it was like everybody was so lit, but it was so fast. Yeah. Because it's yes. like they weren't. No one, and I don't mean this in a in a mean way, but no one like cared about them as a person first. Yeah. It was the like music. I've never been like heard somebody be like, "Hey, man, I love Lil Pump as a person." <laughs> like I've never heard, I, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Like. It's just because it was the music that mattered first. Correct. And if the music kind of falls off, then the, nobody the, gives a fuck. No anymore. one gives yeah. a fuck. Mm -hmm. So it's like, bro, that happens all the time. That's yeah. why people are industry plants where they'll just buy the biggest feature that they can buy and put it on a record and it'll blow up and then it won't sustain because mm -hmm. it's like that record did really well. But like, it's a moment. It's yeah. a moment. Mm -hmm. You're buying a moment. That's why it's like, would you rather have that or would you rather have something that's a little bit lower level? It's long With, term. Correct. Yeah, that like you, you can ride it, on forever. Right. You could do it forever. Yes. I mean, dude, I know I know Caskey could literally just never do anything ever again. Mm -hmm. And he, he could just do music. He could literally just do whatever he wants to do. Yep. Because he's worked so hard on like like being a fan per like like being hands on with the fans. Mm -hmm. And like being like I genuinely love and care for the people that support me. Yes. Right? And like, dude, because it's like Think about it, bro. You drop an album, like, how much do you think it costs to break an artist right now? Or break a record? If I, had to, if I had to, to what, to, like, break, to break something out? Like, if, like, I, like, okay, say I had this massive record and nobody knows who I am. Like, how much do you think on average it costs to probably break that artist to make them, like, oh, shit, who's that guy? Like, 100,000? 100, 100, 100, 100 to 200,000, I would say, is probably yeah. a pretty accurate number. Mm. Like, and I, I heard one time, I don't know how accurate it is, but, like, Rihanna puts a million dollars behind every single. I believe that. Yeah. So it's like... On that level. And that's why you need record labels in those senses, because you need a machine. You need a machine, and you need... Record labels are just banks, bro. That's really all it is. They're banks with connections. Because, mm. like, record labels own all of the Spotify playlists. They own all the fucking... The Apple Music playlist, all the big YouTube channels, yeah. like they're just there to juice you up. Yeah, they just give you a loan, and they're like, you know what? I see that if we gave you a loan of this amount of money, and I'm gonna break it down. Like if they gave you a hundred thousand dollars, they're like, I think you could probably make two hundred grand, and we're gonna take two hundred grand, and then once we've recouped on that, then you can start making money. Correct. And it's like mm. you only take money if you need it. Correct. And that's why a lot of artists are like, if you can suffer for a little longer and be independent and like not take money from somebody else, you're going to like Russ, bro. Russ is a perfect. Example. Oh, yeah. He's we know that. Probably and, the most um, successful independent. Uh, mm -hmm. Tech nine. Tech, Tech nine is another great mm -hmm. example. He actually is the most successful yeah. independent artist. Like ever. He's the, statistically, right? Yeah. Like when number wise. Yeah. And he tours so much. Crazy. bro. Yeah. He tours like I, I want to say from what I heard, this might be inaccurate. So don't don't roast me. But, like, <laughs> I heard he tours for like at least 200 some days a year. Oh, for real? Mm. Yeah, bro. And like, he's always performing. He's always touring. I saw a Tech Nine show uh, with Ritz not too long ago, and it was still fucking incredible. Yeah, damn. It was incredible. I believe that because that's a different level of fan base. Like that's like got a crazy. Think cult. about uh, think about his fan base. That's different, but that that would that is a perfect example. Yeah. So for you now, 
moving forward, first thing I want to ask you is who do you who do you? I actually want to ask you this first. What do you want to do in terms of the music going forward? How do you want to drop as in, independently? Do you want to Take drop it. something every couple of weeks? Are you feeling like something that's you? Are you going to start start dropping immediately now? Like what's what's the plan? I'm going to be vague, but I'm going to say I'm just going to take the emotion out of releasing music, and I'm just going to drop when I feel like dropping. Um, I've got I'm going to drop something on uh, next month, exclusive, okay. and then I'm just okay. going to start dropping is dude i sent into my late my not my label but my management team i sent in enough records that i could drop until the end of next year and that was it, once it, again because i recorded for two years straight yeah so you don't have, you could not record another record now from now on spot on Damn. and you could drop something for the rest i of the could year. probably drop some for the next three years and drop once every two weeks how many songs do you think you just got now just sitting there at least 300 Whew, sheesh Damn. Like, now, how many of those do you think are actually solid solid good good records three I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I was like, damn. <laughs> nah, bro. I mean, I mean, probably like genuinely. I mean, and that's what a lot of artists do. Like Taylor Swift will record 300 songs of and course. just put it down into 12 and put it on an album. Yeah. I would say probably 50 of them are like really solid. Like, like really, really, really solid. Mm -hmm. mm. So you're going to have to go back through them, piece, you know, piece through them and figure out which ones you want to go with yeah. at this particular time, so on and so forth. Yeah. And dude, I... I've just been so creative lately, and I've I've been recording so much music, bro. Like, I I record almost every single day. It's like a it's genuinely like that, therapy bro. to me. I love that. If I don't do it, I feel weird. Reading the Bible and yes. making music is the only two things I do every day. Bro, you, <sighs> bro, this is this feels so surreal to me because it's so weird just thinking back six years ago, bro. five six years ago. When we were like you were, you've always been so into mu making music, bro. So I, it makes me genuinely happy Thank to you. see you doing this the way you want to do it. And I understand you're not where you want to be yet, but at the but same time, I love that you are where you're supposed to be right I now. I agree. And I'm I'm gonna just say this now. I thought I literally had this conversation with my mother on my way before I came here. I have made it in a sense of like not that I'm. Let me, let me make sure you guys don't fucking try to roast me here. I haven't <laughs> made it, made it. I know that. But like, I think success is how you see it. And I look back at the 16 year old me, 17 year old me working at fucking Smoothie King. And if he would have known that all of my bills every month are paid from music, mm -hmm. I might not be like, you know, out here f like money spreading and, you know, doing, you know, buying a <laughs> jewelry and shit. But like, my bills are paid because of music. Mm -hmm. I'm taken care of because of music. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I can keep just growing and growing and growing and mm -hmm. making more of an impact, buddy, I'm I'm genuinely I'm happy as can fucking be, dude. Yeah, that's how it's like about. right now. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy. Like, if I don't ever get bigger than this, like, it's not gonna not happen because I, I, my work ethic is stupid. It's yeah, I know a, it it's, is. It's to a fault, but mm -hmm. like, um, I'd be happy. Yeah, but of I'd course, yeah, the the overall goal you would say would be, of course, to get way bigger, be able to take care of moms. Yeah. You know, whatever family you got. I have a list of people that are like, hey, if you get rich, you got to retire. Man. Correct. And it's like one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> that to me today. Yeah, so there you go. So that's the goal. So, yeah, well, um, before we wrap this up, I wanted to ask you, um, so who, uh, who do you, who do you want to do a, a, a record with? Man. Who do you who who do you see any is alive of course dream collab um, yeah who's a collab dream that collab. you feel is actually something that you actually I'm I'm not, I'm not even gonna say realistic something that you even if you feel like it's out there whatever you feel like who do you feel Mike you know Mike you know I, if I said Mike Stud would that make oh Mike Stud yeah so who's he, that? he goes by just Mike now. he's actually a white rapper isn't he's he? kind of like a a, a a dude version of like Casey Musgraves if they had mm -hmm. 808s. I don't now, know any of these now. people are. I know a, this one dude I know, uh, Darren. Yeah. He put me on him. He bro. loves that dude. He's so good, bro. So check, it's I think it's called The Highs is the name of the album. Um, so he was going by Mike Studd for a very long time, and he was like making rap music, sports rap music type shit. Like I, I watched this documentary. It's incredible. But like he was once again, he was someone that was best friends with Post Malone at, at a certain point. And he's, I guess, one of the other guys that I kind of try to like mold myself after as in um, personality because it's like, dude, they're just so 
chill and they just kind of just go with it and and roll with it and the music is so fucking good and mike posner mike posner is Yo. my favorite my favorite artist ever like, he, he walked. Oh, he, didn't he walk across the. Fire. He yeah. walked bro. across the. Um, yeah, he like some spiritual transformation yeah. recently. He but, walked across America. Yeah, yeah, bro, that's crazy. His album, a real good kid. It's an orange album. Yeah, uh, just so you can you can watch it from start to finish. You have to watch it and then, or listen to it because in the beginning of the first record, he says, "If you don't have forty five minutes, just sit down and listen to this album in entirety. Then don't do it. Ha- like have some respect for yeah. me. Yeah, and just sit down. And I remember." genuinely taking that serious and i sat down i was like fuck yeah i'm gonna do that and i just sat in my house speakers set up and i just lights dimmed and i just listened to it and it is the best album from top to bottom that i've ever heard Mm. and i i always get mike posner as a reference when people say that they hear my music and my tone and the way that i write so i would say mike both fuck two mics two mics man man i was expecting you to say Rihanna or something. I don't know. Post Malone. Or Post Malone, yeah, actually. You know, I, obviously, Post Malone is yeah. definitely up there. Um, can, we, can, we, can we close out? This shit died? Yeah. It did die. It did die? Mm-hmm. It saves that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Damn. Damn, dog. Well, that's a shitty way to end, but fuck it. It happened. So it's going to cut, and then it's going to go to like, yeah. I was like, damn, that was... Shout out to, shout out to Jamari, though. Shout All out right, to for Jamari, saving us, okay? Man. Technical difficulties. Okay. What were we saying? Uh, dream collab. <laughs> yes, we were talking about the dream collab. Mike right? Posner. I, I'm, I'm going to just I'm gonna <laughs> just stay solid and just say Mike Posner. And you Mike know what? Posner. He reshared me one time on his story. I literally have that bitch framed in my house. <laughs> Is I literally, that serious? I, bro, huh? listen... I thought that shit was so ill that yeah. I, I took a screenshot of him just reposting my story and of me like singing a cover that I did of his. Yeah. And I fucking took a picture of it and then I framed it and put that shit in my house. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that gets you going I didn't motivation. Re- I, bro, I've never met a, a, a Posner, um, like genuine fan. I mean, bro. I know people will respect him, but. I fucked with a handful of his songs. For sure. He's man. good. Listen I know to he the, Listen to that album. But I've never, heard any, you, I've never heard anyone talk about him dope. like you're talking about him right now. So. Dude. Yeah, that's true too. And he's another guy that's just like, Dude's got it figured out mentally. I love that. Yeah, he's super like spiritual, spiritual now. Like he, you can tell he like went through something. Yeah. Maybe he did the ayahuasca or whatever. I think. <laughs> I think <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think he it's lost his hiking. dad, and when he lost, and that's part of what the album was about. Is uh, that like yeah. he lost his dad, and like the album is is very like spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. And such, dude, it's so. Good, I love that bro. shit, bro. Yeah. So before we before we maybe die again. Um, <laughs> Is there anything that you want to say to the people who listen to you, the fans you have, who uh, are waiting for new music? Thank you. Thank you? Thank you. Because if it wasn't for, you know, and it's, it's not a lot of people, dude, but, like, if it wasn't for the people that support me now, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. Yeah. And I, I know every artist says that, but, like, I finally, I'm in a point where it's, like, I get to say that and genuinely mean it, you know, where it's not like, thanks guys for all you do. And there's like six people streaming and, you know, it's super awesome. I get so many messages and DMs and this is not a flex by any means. Like I get so much love constantly from people every day. Just, you know, people that support me will just send me messages and check in on me as a person, Mm. as a person, Mm -hmm. not like, Hey man, what's the music coming out? Like, Hey man. How are you? You know, you know, people are like, they, they, they never ask how you are. Yeah. You know, dude. So thank you is what I want to say, because I'm happy as fuck, dude. I'm, I'm genuinely like I'm living in my calling and I'm living in my purpose. And it's because of that. It's it's awesome, dude. Yeah, it's awesome. Damn, bro. I love to hear that, man. Well, we appreciate you coming on, bro. Thanks for, thanks yeah, for man. having me. This has been a fucking blast. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. I, I, feel like <laughs> I just got high and just started talking. Because you did get high. high. I did get high. Dog. I was yeah. so high, I forgot I met Post Malone. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, for the people who do not know you, um, for real, where, uh, where, can they, uh, where can they find you at? Oh, man. Uh, you can find me on Spotify. Um, it's Angel Hill. There's a few other Angel Hills that obviously don't look like me, so don't fucking, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. um, My boy took five years away from me, man, and came back skinny and tatted. 
Hey, hey, I used to be 300 pounds. Last time you saw me. <laughs> Wait, for like, real? Yeah, bro. Bro, he was a big. He I remember you got, were. He yeah, got big yeah. at one point. Damn. Yeah, never to the point where you were like, I looked, I looked at you and I was like, oh my God, he's so bad. You were a big guy at one point. Yeah, though. I was that. Yeah, but I'm six foot. So yeah. like 300 pounds on me looks a little bit more natural than if I was like, I guess. If you were Yeah, short, height five, makes a difference. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For, for sure. sure. So, well, yeah, we, we, uh, we appreciate you, man. I see the progression. I appreciate um, it. I'm very. Just genuinely fucking happy for you, bro. I'm I'm happy to be okay. here. I'm and happy I'm not just to be saying alive. That, so. I'm happy to be alive. Just like oh, yeah. that. Um, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Payday Out Podcast and dealing with us on our, our technical difficulties. We appreciate you too, bro. All right. Um, but just like that, follow us at Payday Out Podcast. Me at, and me at Roy Motives. Him at Angel Hill. T Greenery. All right. And just like that, we out. Bah. Be. Oh, shit, I forgot. Oh, hey, yeah. shout out Imperfect Tees, <laughs> my Imperfect Tees, I'm tripping. <laughs> shout out Imperfect Tees. Get your Imperfect Tees at uh, TroyBlatton.com. And make sure you follow Troy, too, at Troy Blatton. Hey, Troy All out right. there crisscrossing, applesauce, <laughs> and somebody. <laughs> oh, bro, for real. Probably right now as we speak. Literally. <laughs> Literally.